This is geometry, chapter 11, lesson five on page 454. Sine and cosine. Okay, you remember my Soka Toa, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Obviously, <clears throat> we just said that. The first letter tells me what trig identity it is. Which trig identity? That's the sine, that's the... Cosine. <clears throat> that's the... And these last two letters tell me the... Ratio. Ratio. All right. <clears throat> so O and H is what? Opposite, Opposite over hypotenuse. A and H is? Adjacent over hypotenuse. And O and A is? Opposite adjacent. Okay, so now let's, do we know what side's opposite, what side's adjacent, which side's the hypotenuse? Let's just see if we know this. Angle A, what's adjacent? What side is adjacent to angle A? Six is adjacent. What's opposite? Eight. Eight. What's the hypotenuse? Ten. Ten. So when we use these trig ratios, we're mostly, when, always, when we're looking at, when we're using a triangle until we get to the unit circle, we're only using these trig ratios for the acute angles, not the right angle. Got it? Not the right angle. <clears throat> um, because if I'm using the right angle, how do I decide which one's adjacent? You can't, can you? Because this one's adjacent. The six and the eight are both adjacent. Okay, so we, we will, when we get to the unit circle, know what the sine of 90 degrees is. But when we're solving for angles or sides of a triangle, we don't use the 90 degree angle. Got it? All right. So the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. All right, we're just going to, does anybody still have this handout? All right, I'm gonna draw a bunch of triangles on the board. I will draw them. I just need to know that they're right. Um, it says trig ratios on it. This is the first one, number one. Three. <clears throat> All right, we're going to do the sine of Z, the cosine of X, and then we'll solve for those angles. All right. All right. So, who wants to get us started? Sam, you want to get us started? What's the sign of Z? Um, it would be... Give me the original numbers and then simplify it. So, it would be... Opposite... So, 21 over 35. Alright, can we simplify that? Um, <coughs> yes. Two. Three over five. Yes, yeah, seven goes into both of them. Three over five. Which would be zero point. Zero. Okay, we're gonna leave it as a ratio. All right, if you can leave it as a ratio, you leave it as a ratio. So the only time in trig, and you're gonna get this over the next two years, the only time in trig you would ever go, you would ever write it in decimal form is if I asked you something like, what's the sign of 32 degrees? Can you do that in your calculator? <clears throat> A 
And now you would go to four decimal places. And Allie, what do you get? 3.5299. Got it? If I asked you for the sine of 30 degrees, now you should have a ratio, mm -hmm. right? And it is one half. You would not write that as 0 0.5. You would write that as one half. So ratio, our most simplified radical. Now do the, um, do the sign of 45 degrees in your calculator. You get a ratio. Square to 2 over 2, right? Yeah. Square to 2 over 2. Now do the sign of 60 degrees you should get a ratio. Square to three over two, right? All right, these you're gonna memorize. 30, 45, 60, we're gonna go over those. Anything other than and, and 90 and 180 and every 90 degrees forward. <clears throat> All right, so we could solve for the value of Z, what the degrees are. How would I do that, Luke? How would I solve for Z? All right, so right now I have the sine of Z is three fifths. So how would I solve for Z? I'm going to leave it as three-fifths, but remember, we talked about this starting out. I have to take the inverse. inverse, and I get the inverse by hitting shift, shift sign, three-fifths, and, and Luke, give me that angle. It's, I should write the negative one there. <clears throat> What is that angle? Three no, shift sign three over five equals your degrees. When you hit the equal sign, it should give you the degrees. Oh, sure. That's it. 36.8. 36.9, right? So this angle is 36.9 degrees. I was expecting it to be more than that. Oh, wait, that's the angle Z. Okay, that, that makes more sense. 36.9, I wrote it in the wrong place. Why was I expecting, if I were looking at X, I, that's the angle I was thinking of. Why would I have expected angle X to be bigger? Okay, well, Because 28 is bigger than 21. Yes. When I wrote it up there, I was, I was thinking that's not right because the angle opposite the larger side should be larger. And how are X and Z related? They're complementary. They have to add up to 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. Got it? Okay. What is the cosine of X, Charlotte? Cosine of X. Um, 21 over 28. Cosine is what? Oh, I erased it. Cosine is what over what? So, ga is, it's C, C what? C? A-H. A-H. So adjacent. adjacent. What's the adjacent? Wouldn't that be 21? 21 is the adjacent. All right, so it's C-A-H. H. What's H stand for? Oh, okay, I want you to look at this. What did we say was the sign of the other angle? 
Is that interesting? Okay, so that is something that is true in trig. The sine of one of the acute angles will always equal the cosine of the other acute angle. Is that why they call it cosine? <sighs> no, not really. But that's a great thought. It only works in right triangles and not in the unit circle. However, we're going to see some interesting things. Yes? So would the sine of x be equal to the cosine of z? The sine of x equals the cosine of z. Yes. Okay, let's solve for angle x. How would I solve for that, Julia? Angle x. Okay, do that. Tell me what angle X is. Okay, I'm expecting larger than 36.9. Actually, I'm, I'm expecting larger than 45. 53.1. Which one? 53.1. 53.1. See how they're acute? 53.1 plus 36.9 is, in fact, 90 degrees. All right, so the sine of A would equal the cosine of what? The sine of A would equal the cosine of? C. C. That's correct. What about the sine of C? It would equal the cosine of? A. Luke, you playing, you're with us? All right. So now we're going to do the sine of C, the cosine of C for this one. All right, Kamaya, what is the cosine of C in the second triangle? The cosine or the sine? The co a sine. Thank um, you very much. The sine would be... Um, Give me the original numbers. It would be 30 yep. over 34. Exactly. Now let's simplify it. Well, we know two goes into both of them, right? Yes. So that would be? 18 over 16. I think it's 17. 17. And then you would take the inverse by pushing shift, yep. sign, and then 15 over 17. Yes. And what do you get? 61.9. All right. And then you ask your brain, is that logical? It does make sense. Because I know that these two are complementary, and this one better be the larger one. All right, Callie, what about the cosine of angle C? This one here, the cosine of this angle C. Okay, it would be um, 34 over 14. Okay, remember it's, so, ga. Okay, so it would be 60. Yes, over. 34. Exactly. All right, we can simplify that. Two goes into both of them. Well, we know the 34 is 17, and that is eight, eight seventeenths. And if you did shift, cosine, eight over 17, you would also get 61.9, because we're at the same angle. Make sense? All right, do y'all understand this? Got it, everybody have this? Okay. Now we're gonna work somewhere we're either going to solve for the missing side or the missing angle.
All right. Let's solve for a missing side. All right, we're going to number them. One, two, three, four. All right, so I don't tell you what trig ratio to use. Okay, so for number one, I want you to be thinking, what trig ratio would I use to solve for the value of X? All right, so Sam, I want you to think about it. Is everybody thinking? When everybody think, Sam, what trig ratio would I use? Sine. Sine. How did you decide that? Because the two sides with... Uh, <clears throat> That's right. X is opposite and 17 is the hypotenuse. All right, so give me the equation that I should write. Sam. 17 over mm -hmm. X. Okay. But I think I should start with something else. Or sine yes. 59 degrees yes. equals 17 over x. Or x over 17. x over 17. That's my equation. Right? The sine of the angle equals the side opposite the angle over the hypotenuse. It's the same equation. All right? But just now we have variables. All right, so now, um, how am I going, going to solve for X? Mm, multiply both sides by 17. Correct, multiply both sides by 17. All right, so go ahead and give me X, solve for that for me. and we're gonna replace X. Fourteen point six. Fourteen point six. Does it make sense? We don't know, do we? But we do know it's less than the hypotenuse. Right, your length of a, a side should be less than the hypotenuse. Okay, number two, number two. Allie, <laughs> what trig ratio are we gonna use? Ignoring the Y's, the Y's are gonna be the next round that we do, okay? <clears throat> so we're just solving for X, ignoring the Y. All right. What trig ratio? Correct. The tan of 40 degrees is 20 over X, right? Look at the angle. Ask yourself what sides you have. That dictates what trig ratio you use. Okay, now, how am I going to solve for X? Okay, I'm gonna swap oh, my yeah. extremes. I'm gonna put X over here. I'm gonna put the tan of 40 over here. Do you remember when I I, I said that before? Um, okay, so two over four, that's one half, is the same thing as four over eight. You agree? All right, let's swap the two and the eight and see if I have the same value. So that'd be eight over four equals four over two. Do I have the same value? You can swap your extremes. This is the same thing as over one. 
So when your variable is in the denominator, you're going to swap your extremes. Okay, we'll do the algebra of it in just a minute, but go ahead. You can just swap your extremes. So what is the value of x here? Twenty divided by the ten of forty. Twenty three point what? Eight. Okay. All right, so let's do the algebra of that. Why can I swap my, oh, I showed you this. But if I multiply by x, like I multiply by 17 here, that would eliminate my x, right? So then I would have x times the tan of 40 degrees equals 20. Then you divide by what's not x, which is the tan of 40 degrees, that eliminates, and x is 20 over the tan of 40. So you can just swap your extremes. Swap your extremes when x is in the, the variables in the denominator. All right, Luke here. Everybody look, number three. You're gonna be solving for x, okay? So everybody think, what trig ratio should I use and Luke, you're gonna give me the answer. Think about the side you have that drives the trig ratio you're going to use. It is the cosine, so tell me the equation. Cosine. 27. 27 degrees equals. Adjacent over hypotenuse. How do I solve for that, Luke? Yes, by what number? Multiply both sides by? Yeah, 20. It almost looks like a 26, huh? All right, so look, tell me, what is 20 times the cosine of 27? And we'll put this X in. Seventeen point eight. All right, Charlotte, right here. We're gonna solve for x. This x. What trig ratio do I use? Um, okay. Give me the equation. Tan. 36, I mean, 30, no, what? 10, 53. 53 degrees equals? Equals, um, uh, 12. Okay, what is it? It's T-O-A. Okay, O is the opposite. opposite. Harder to see when the triangle isn't. Oh, X. Yes. All right. How do I solve for that, Charlotte? Um, you multiply by the twelve on both sides. Yes. Multiply by twelve on both sides. Do that for me. What's twelve times the tan of fifty-three degrees? And we'll fill in that X. Fifteen point nine. All right, now we're gonna go back and we're gonna solve using these same triangles and we're gonna solve for y. We're gonna solve for an angle. 
So when we solve for an angle, what, what am I telling my brain? I'm going to have to use the, when I'm solving for angle, I'm telling my brain, I'm going to have to use the inverse. Got it? Solving for the ratio, you're just entering. Solving for the angle, you're using the inverse. Okay. Julia, number one. Solving for angle Y. Cosine, give me the equation, cosine. Um, 14.6 over 17. Well, it would be of y degrees of the angle equals 14.6 over 17. But when I solve for the angle, I use the Inverse, I want to see every step on your test and in your homework. Then I would write the inverse of 14.6 over 17. That's, uh, and what is that angle? Yes, I was expecting 31 because I remember that one was 59. But that's correct, 30.8. All right, Kamaya, what am I using here to solve for Y? Tan. Tan, so it's the tan of Y equals? 23.8 over 20. To solve for the angle, I use the inverse. inverse. Ladies and gentlemen, come on. Inverse of the ratio equals the degrees, the measure of the angle. And that is? 49.9. 49.9 or 50 degrees. I bet that, was that a 30 degree angle before? I don't remember. It was a, not a 30 degree angle. All right. Does everybody, did somebody else do this as well? Did you do this as well? Is it 49.9? Okay, good. All right, three, count. What trick ratio am I going to use? Think about the sides that we have, all right? So we have this angle, we have that side and that side. Okay, sine is what? Okay, do we have the opposite side? We don't have the opposite side. So we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Which one does adjacent and hypotenuse? Exactly. All right. So the cosine of 27 degrees. I'm bleh. We're going to pretend like we don't know that. Why? I didn't, I didn't change that. The cosine of y, we know what the answer is, right? The cosine of y degrees equals, I bet when you said sine, you were thinking that was where my y was going to be, obviously, because that's where I put it before. Okay, equals 17.8 over 20. To solve for the angle, we use the, y'all are so weak, come on. To solve for the angle, we use the inverse. Come on, thank you. All right, cosine, inverse cosine. And tell me what you get, Callie. We know it should be 27 degrees, right? Twenty-seven point one. All right, here we go, last one. Sam, 
What trig ratio are we going to use? Tangent. Tan. Tan of y equals 12 over 15.9. To solve for the angle, we use the inverse. inverse. Thank you. 12 over 15.9. Give me that angle. Thirty-seven point just thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. I was expecting thirty-seven. The other one was fifty-three. 